Director of Lessons. Jean-Jean Pierre, a journalist and uh, composer, music producer. I'm Mark Morial, president of the National Urban League. I live in New York, and I'm from New York. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Peter Lagarde, uh, delegate of Congresses, uh, district manager for St. Thomas, St. John, down the Christian City. Pastor Troy Parville Smith, and Democratic Chaplain for the Department of Power here. Christine Fields, BT99. I'm Adelaide Sanford, Vice Chancellor of the Board of Regents of the University of the State of New York. Jasper Burns, poet, writer, uh, playwright, Haiti by way of uh, New Orleans, by way of California, by way of New York. <laughs> Of the Institute of Positive Education, Chicago. Hockey Martin, the uh, Third World Press, Institute of Positive Education, uh, Chicago State University. Benny Ivey, Senator Democratic New Orleans, Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, Rusty Burns from California by way of New Orleans. Trinity Burns, Palm Desert, California. Cassandra Grant, educator. Uh, New York State Education Department, but also representing the Board for the Education of People of African Ancestry. Jean Emanuel, University of the Virgin Islands Professor of Caribbean and African Studies, uh, Pan African Support Committee of the Virgin Islands. Mary Emanuel, Managing Director, Roy Consultants, Ohio Buckeye by birth, St. Tommy and by choice. Ohio oh, Buckeye. All right, that's my territory. Jackie yeah, Rowan from Queens, New York, retired Secretary of Board of Education, and an ICE assistant. Leonard Denston, President Emeritus, National Association of Black Social Workers, currently living in Durham, North Carolina. Reverend Willie Wilson, pastor of the Union Temple Baptist Church in Washington, D.C. Hank Sanders, a member of the Alabama Senate, uh, new author, and uh, Bill of Community Institution. Rose Sanders, Hank's wife, South Alabama, the president of the National Voter Rights Museum, the Slavery Museum, and the Riots Campaign, replacing inequalities in schools of excellence. Uh, Gilbert Parks, uh, Dr. Gilbert Parks, uh, Arcadia, Oklahoma, uh, Black Cowboys of America. <laughs> A little uh, commercial later on, y'all all come to my rodeo on Labor Day weekend. <laughs> but uh, uh, chairman of the Board of Marriages of National Medical Association, Black Psychiatrists of America, and uh, for the love of our people. My name is Opio Chiram, I'm state legislator from Oklahoma. Shall we say Julian, educator from New Orleans, Louisiana? I'm Tamisha St. Julian, I'm the Finance Authority of New Orleans. Barbara Major, People's Institute, St. Thomas Health Clinic, New Orleans. Jemadari Kamara, Director of the Center for African, Caribbean, and Community Development at the University of Massachusetts in Boston, a member of the uh, Asian Community Support Project. Ron Chisholm from New Orleans, Louisiana, with the People's Institute for Survival and Beyond. James Hayes from New Orleans, with the People's Community Organizer with the People's Institute for Survival and Beyond. Nika Taylor, Atlanta, Georgia, Circle Assistance. Buddy uh, Murphy, a producer of the New Orleans Jazz and Heritage Festival and a member of the Haiti Support Project. Mm -hmm. Miriam Barthelis, a proud Haitian American woman, jazz vocalist, and member of Haitian Faces of Haiti. All right. I'm Alain educator, singer, entertainer, and member of Faces of Haiti. Reverend Mary Wilson, co-pastor Union Temple Baptist Church, Washington, D.C., also the executive director of the Harambe House for Youth in D.C. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, Isalama Archery Juke, scheduler and project development for Danny Glover, and faculty member at the University of Illinois in Anthropology of Dance. Mm -hmm. Judith? Madams, entertainer, uh, teacher, actress, dancer, okay. um, <laughs> member of Faces of Haiti. 
problème, moi c'est Azor, je suis en Haïti, musicien. My name is Azar, I live in Haiti, I'm a musician. Steve Akor from Haiti, I'm a musician, audio recording engineer, and a singer. Thanks. Eloise Anderson, representing Catherine Dunham, who would love to be here, but is resting on the boat. Former company member, retired New York City Board of Education. Tyrone Pence, General Secretary of the Progressive National Baptist Convention. <clears throat> Joe Beasley, Southern Regional Director for the Rainbow Push Coalition, Atlanta, Georgia, Asian Support Committee. Yeah, My name is Adam uh, Eccleston. I'm a jeweler and a jewelry manufacturer. My name is Fahim Mohammed. I'm the Vice President of Universal Love Jewelry, one of the um, biggest black owned and operated jewelry companies in the United States, not in the world. Greetings, everyone. Malika Sanders, Selma, Alabama, with the 21st Century Youth Leadership Movement and the Diaspora Exchange Department. Good morning, y'all. My name is Shani. I'm here from D.C. and I'm a writer, poet, and activist. Hi, I'm Keisha from Brooklyn, New York, and mm -hmm. I guess part of the Haiti Support Project committee will be planning the event to get some young folks, I guess. Good morning. I'm Sandra Beasley, wife of Joe Henry Beasley. I am retired from anything and everything. <laughs> 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 Doctor of Chinese Medicine and also the project coordinator for the support project. Good morning again and welcome. I'm Brian Modest from Congress Virgin Islands Congresswoman Donna Christensen's Washington staff. Good morning, I'm Derek Gabriel, from, once again from BIA, Delegate to Congress, Donna Christensen's office in St. Thomas. Good morning, I'm Becky Shelton from Atlanta, Georgia. Adele Regis, a junior student attending Knight High School and part of Haiti Support Project, assisting Pe Peggy Regis. <laughs> Good morning, uh, I am the Honorable Professor Kwame Abdul Bay from <laughs> Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, at 33, I just happen to be the uh, youngest judge in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Uh, I'm a uh, self-published author and a uh, legal anthropologist. Hi, I'm Dr. Jean Rousseau. I'm a surgeon by way of Haiti, France, uh, Chicago, and Shreveport, Louisiana, where I live now. Jeanne Rousseau, I'm a pharmacist. I was born in Haiti. I live in uh, uh, France. I live in Congo. I also live in uh, Chicago. Now I'm in Louisiana. Gabriel Sensor, an engineer. I live in the Virgin Islands. I was born in Cape Haitian, Haiti. I am Roland Metellus, manager, Western Florida. I'm Wayne Thompson. I'm the guy that um, runs a lot of errands. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also the executive director of the Oklahoma Health yeah. Project and work with HSP. Stand up, Rose. Thank you. Those comments were extremely powerful. Uh, there are two things I want to quickly say. Um, Ron, you're right. Those of us who uh, in, in battles in different places, like when you go to South Africa, I mean, right now I'm trying to get students back to back uh, a build a center hanging out over there for those students. Then you go to uh, Mali. That is a problem. And I, my thing is, there's got to be a way to reconcile it. I, I know you're right when you're focusing on Haiti. In Selma, where I'm from, right down the street from me, there's a place called Slave City where people don't have running water uh, I'm, and don't have electricity except a pump. So my thing is, I think we have to have two strategies. One is the strategy that deals with immediate needs. And that's the project, the single project that you're talking about. Something that's concrete that we go in right away and we do. And I think no matter how stressed we are, most of us from organizations where our funds are depleted. Okay, 
And uh, like our radio station has been burnt down twice. So every time you try to educate people, you are met with this type of domestic terror. So I think that we have to come up with a plan that what I call in the miseducation of the Negro. And, and, and I think we got the short range ideas, the, the, the school and immediate needs, the single projects. But I think ultimately if we're going to have an impact on the way this government, your government, perceives our people globally, that we have to organize and, and, and stop the miseducation of our people because they don't know nothing about Haiti. Yeah. Um, I had to go to South Africa and hear Mbeki talk about the details of Haiti myself. Yeah. Being isolated in Selma and not, and not getting the direct news and the truth. So I'm saying we have to come up with a plan. Since this is the 50th year of the Brown decision, we kicked off, that's why in introducing myself, I said the Rise campaign. We kicked off a campaign right in front of the Supreme Court to end the miseducation. Carla G. Woodson wrote about it. We have never had a systematic plan. Going back to what you're saying about the national uh, rites of passage, these programs in churches, we're going to have to teach our children on a systematic basis about their miseducation. That deals with Haiti. That deals with Africa. That deals with every aspect, Iraq, every aspect of our existence that has been totally mentally enslaved our people. And I think I would like to uh, uh, give people more information about that Rise campaign to end our miseducation. The last point I want to make, I think we have to work within our spheres of interest. Like right now, I'm working with three reparations uh, legal teams. And that is the one that's dealing with Tulsa, that is in Coba, three different teams. Now we just lost the case in Tulsa. As, as, as terrible as that was, we lost it. But the point is, it helps to educate people. People didn't even know what happened in Tulsa until yeah. we filed the case. Yeah. You might lose the case on the facts, but you still get the word out. So, um, I really believe, and I talked to Don, uh, 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 um, Ron about this, that those of us who are lawyers, quite a few lawyers on this team, on, in this ship, that if you're a lawyer, one thing you can do is using the reparations lawsuit to let people know that this country was forced to pay reparations right. to the French right. and, and, um, and the Americans collected it. Yeah. Well, in bringing a reparations lawsuit, I, I, I'm not under no false uh, uh, hope expectations, but just bringing that lawsuit would help educate people about that fact, that here you take a people's country, and then when they win the revolution, you make them pay. Mm -hmm. And then our, our so-called government I would like to get with a team of lawyers and go to the three reparations people that I work with to help work on a long-range plan to make sure that happens as a mechanism to educate. And my last comment, whatever we do, we can find ways to do whatever we're doing now to advance the cause of Haiti as we advance our, uh, the things that we normally do. Okay, I got Dr. Gilbert Parks again. Yes, good, le uh, good morning again, leaders. And let's make it tight. I said, Ron know that I can go on for days about this issue of black people. That's true. He's right, because I got something to say about it and got a plan. Uh, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is never buy any more uh, Levi jeans, uh, and that's a plan. And I say that to you because it's important for you to understand the dynamics of economics and politics. And all of you all know that one reason of the recent events that's happening in Haiti is because of the cheap labor issue in Haiti. Yep. And all of you all know the two major corporations in America just built plants in Haiti. One of them is Liz Clark, uh, what's her name? Hey boy. Hey boy. There you go. And the other one is Levi. I've been wearing Levi jeans all my life as a cowboy. Now I got to stop wearing them. That's a major serious issue for me. <laughs> but I'm going to do it because it's a serious issue. And that's part of the reason why this happened. I want you to think about that, because that's the serious issue. The serious issue is that this world is about institutional building for everybody other than us. The whole process in America called integration that came out of Brown is the most detrifying thing that ever happened to America. The present form of integration has enslaved our minds much more than the process of slavery. We've got to free ourselves from mental enslavement all over the world. That's a key issue. My good friend this morning that we discussed asked me, why did you decide to be a psychiatrist when you really love doing other things? 
I said, because I want to understand why black people do what they do. <laughs> and support everybody except themselves. How can you teach somebody to have a 93% foreign trade deficit? We're the only nation of people in the world that spend more with other people than we do with ourselves. Hmm. You don't know why come they don't go to the, the, the economic nine rather than the economic big eight? It's because African American is the ninth largest nation in the world, economically. But we spend our money with everybody else other than ourselves. Everybody we do something with us. The whole process of America right now in the world is doing what? It's the same thing as slavery was 400 years ago physically, and that is to rob the black community of its intellectual resources, and we spend time building other institutions and building other people's institutions rather than building our own institutions. Salvation. And I summarize it by simply saying, and Ron, and Lindsay, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> two other people already. So I understand. That we must, out of this room as leaders, take the role that we're going to free ourselves intellectually, free ourselves mentally, in terms of the process of living in the world, how all the great black intellects of the world, if you call it the 10% or whatever, spend time building other institutions, building institutions that are against our best interests all over the world. And Haiti is just an example of it. It's clear why people are not going to support Haiti. It's because Haiti is against the best interests of the white supremacy groups of the world. So they're going to oppose it. I never expect for them to support Haiti. But that we don't support it is the same thing when we don't support these things in America. And that's what we have to go out here as our master plan is how we support every institution in America that builds us. Leonard, I yield to you. I'm a little paranoid, so I gotta get to the side. So I am paranoid. So I was very happy to put it up to you. Uh, I was very happy to hear in the preliminary discussion that education may very well be the focus of the support group. Uh, my husband and I first visited Haiti in the early 1970s. There was a gentleman who elected to take us around the island, and it's a breathtakingly beautiful island and he was a tailor and he invited us to his home to eat a meal and I met his wife and I met his children and as we began to talk to him and he was bilingual speaking in both French and Spanish uh, he told me that as a tailor he made one dollar a week he had seven children I can't tell you how guilty it actually made me feel. What made me feel worse out of that entire trip was that as my husband and I were leaving Haiti, his wife came and said to me, can you take my child back with you? Her youngest child, a two-year-old. This woman was willing to give up her child in order to give that child a better opportunity that she thought that my husband and I could provide to that child. Well, obviously, um, Haiti stayed on my mind. I'd never had any parent make any, make any kind of statement like that to me before. Uh, I next focused on Haiti when I was working with the Community Nutrition Institute in Washington, D.C. And I was glad the gentleman mentioned Levi Jeans, because at that time, uh, it was a lobbying institute for nutrition issues in the United States, and Carnation was exporting infant formula to third world countries. Fine. I actually went in and did educational campaigns and told mothers that their breast milk was not good for their babies because of hygiene issues. Well, these are poor countries, and what the mothers were doing was actually diluting that milk with water and literally starving their children. So it was part of my organization's function to go up on Capitol Hill and lobby congressmen, senators, House of Representatives to please stop this company from literally starving babies to death in third world countries. My function was to meet once a week with Esther Peterson under the Jimmy Carter administration and give her an update on our activities. And I would go into the side door of the White House and she would have a little pot of tea on the side and we would sit and we would drink our cup of tea and I would update her on the issue. We were successful in stopping that campaign to starve those young children. Uh, unfortunately, I do have to leave. I have a previous appointment. I know many of you will be sitting with my husband, Professor Jean Emanuel, later on this afternoon. Uh, believe me, you, there are people in St. Thomas who are committed to the cause. Uh, we are willing to help anywhere, anytime, fact-finding missions, 
economic support, anything that we can do. And I'd like to say thank you and welcome to our beautiful island, and I hope you enjoy it. First, I want to really thank Ron for making that explanation, in fact, uh, about why Haiti. In fact, I was sitting there getting ready to ask the question whenever you decided to answer. But I want to <clears throat> cite one example from my childhood and take it one step further. Um, when I was growing up, I was one of 13 children. My mother was a very feisty woman, and she didn't take anything off of anybody. And But... <clears throat> We lived on what's called our property, but my grandfather still lived, so we didn't have any interest in the property at all. So we had to walk two miles to the road and two miles back.
Have you changed your mind? It's been a lot of sound, though. Tell me you claim that you began a life on a different footing. Because they should identify with them 
At a certain age, they need to. At a certain age, the sun needs you. You need the sun if you're a man. Men and women are essentially so different. When we try to say, I mean, women put on some slacks, some I think women are trying to look better in the sun. Put on some slacks and go about that. I can do a man's job. Well, just because they have the muscles to do it. If you look at 
had some score also, check marks or I don't know, you name it, anything. They have a two parent family up to a certain age. But we are beginning to think more in terms of a one parent family. And this is no good. And 
she's going to step right in the plate. Right in the Good. She's going to step right in my, my place, take over, and help you organize this a year from now. How wonderful to see happy fathers, maybe looking a little guilty or something. <laughs> Sons able to say to somebody at school, my daddy said to me so and so. Thank you very much. Another round of applause. Yeah. 
failed to the indigenous army, saying, We, that's exactly what I mean. All the leaders were not for Haiti. We were going to visit the citadel. It was built by King Christopher, who was born in Grenada. The first guy who raised the ban of revolt was Bookman. He was Jamaican. So it's a unity that was created to break the chain where it was weak. And we all participated in it. So you're not going to honor my country or my history. You are going to honor your race and your history.
and across the borders of many nations and burn holes in the four horizons. Freedom, oh freedom, we so thirsty for you where I'm from, that one day I'll take you by the hand and invite you to dwell in my land. But everybody agrees, it seems, to keep me away from their doors. And when I manage to make it ashore, I have no time to unpack my dreams. I work the cane fields, and I swear I have found no sugar in there. Although I came begging for liberty, I am jailed in the land of the free. Freedom, oh freedom, now I know I can't call you my own till the day I build you with my hand in the color and shape of my land.
conversation, um, not accidentally, but on purpose. <laughs> a brother who has managed the city, uh, who has had to deal with issues of economic development in relationship to the National Conference of Mayors, and who was the president of that. And now, I think, in his position as president of the National Urban League, this is, of course, one of those positions which, among other things, uh, has him interfaced with the whole question of economic development in the African American community, entrepreneurial development, all of those kinds of issues, as well as an intersection with corporate America. So he's in a very, very unique and sometimes delicate position in relationship to balancing all of those uh, respective interests. So we've asked him to facilitate that this session this morning. We want it to be um, free willing and uh, participatory. We've assembled um, uh, an outstanding panel of resources. Valier's regime, they came and I'm going to use a Haitian word, they shook our company. And I'm sure you know what that means. And at that time, we had the label of being Duvalier people. Now, uh, about uh, in, uh, after Mr. Aristide took uh, position as president of Haiti, I had a piece of land and I was attacked on that piece of land because, again, I was part of the opposition to Aristide, although I personally fought tremendously to bring him into power. And I went to a hospital and I had uh, two operations, 57 stitches twice. Because of a machete, they cut my head in the back. So that's the second reason why I was chosen today. <laughs> Cultural and historical tourism, creating strong bonds between Haiti and the African-American community participating in the revival of Haiti's economy so as to contribute to the improvement of the population's living conditions. Haiti Support Project has always claimed its political neutrality and its desire to commit to the Haitian people independently of any political structure or partisan feeling. Today, less than 10 days before August 19, the Haiti Support Project has canceled all of the activities that were to take place in Milo and confined cruising into history to Labadi, invoking its refusal to endorse the interim government and decreeing the treatment inflicted upon the is a reaction of the private business sector to the cancellation of the historic visit to Milo by the cruising into history. In answer to an invitation by the Haiti Support Project Group, the Haitian private business sector had enthusiastically accepted to give its full support to the cruising into history event and to take part in a business seminar on the cruising ship that was to bring to our land our American brothers and sisters. Businessmen and women sensitive to the Haitian issue, willing to invest in our country's economy and to contribute in the development of social projects. This fraternal meeting would have allowed these businessmen and women to debate subjects as varied as tourism, agro-processing, natural resources, and telecommunications. Your presence in Haiti is the conclusion of more than two years of sustained and uninterrupted efforts through the trials and uncertainties of one of the most troubled period in our life as a nation. Our meeting was to be a moment of hope, a bonding gesture between the sister communities of the United States and our country. An unfortunate decision made unilaterally without consulting the Haitian side destroyed everything. So here we are at this moment trying to pick up the pieces of dashed hopes 
the hopes of hundreds of small entrepreneurs, horse owners, craftsmen, painters, dancers.